Asia and the Pacific is the most disaster-prone region in the world. Sea levels are rising by up to 8 millimeters per year in some parts of the Pacific. Over 15 years, cyclones in the Arabian Sea have become more frequent and more intense. Changes in the Earth's climate have been ascribed to natural variation, but also to global warming. There has been a three-quarter degree rise in the average temperature of the Earth since the 1880s, and scientists predict this may rise to between two and four degrees by the end of the century. Less dramatic, but no less costly, are patterns of development that are squandering nature's natural capital. It's fish, farmland and forest, it's fresh water and fresh air. Last time on Nature Inc, we saw how the Pacific state of Kiribati was preparing for evacuation. And in the Indian state of Gujarat, we reported on steps being taken to head off environmental disaster. This time, we're in the Philippines and Vietnam. We find that communities are making preparations for a more extreme world. The Philippines is one of the most disaster-prone countries in the world. And Albay, with its active volcano, is one of the most disaster-prone regions in the Philippines, suffering from frequent typhoons, floods, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes and landslides. In 2006, Super Typhoon Reming hit Albay, claiming over 600 lives. It was a traumatic devastation. It's beyond words. There are highways of death. The blast flat then associated with wall of volcanic debris are, you know, as high as 20 to 30 feet, killing people. They are buried alive. The incident at that time was beyond words. In every places I went through, there was, there are death. Albay's governor, Joey Salceda, has pioneered a zero casualty policy. His administration has adopted a killing two birds with one stone approach, investing in disaster risk reduction to make, claims the governor, people of his region safer and better off. The maintenance of the zero casualty goal is one of the distinctive comparative advantages of Albay. Once there is a signal, like signal number one, and it's strong, it's going to hit us, we evacuate. And uh, because once you evacuate during, in the midst of a disaster, it's no longer an evacuation, it is a rescue. While climate skeptics play down the link between global warming and the increased frequency of extreme weather events, the people of Albay are in no doubt about the change in their weather. <laughs> 30 years ago, the weather was quite different. But today, the typhoons are getting stronger. The weather's very erratic. It's very dangerous now to go fishing. Canal systems full of rubbish and other debris restrict runoff and clog drains, adding to the devastation caused by storms and floods. One measure the governor claims is reaping benefits is the government-sponsored Food for Work program aimed at low-income families. Running since 2006, each volunteer gets a five-kilo bag of rice for a day's work clearing the canals. Past and present collide in Kanto, the biggest and most prosperous city in the Mekong Delta, in southern Vietnam. The Mekong Delta covers 39,000 square kilometers, that's larger than Belgium. Its rice paddies produce half of Vietnam's total rice output, more than Japan. However, half of the Mekong rice paddies are less than two meters above sea level. Salt water destroys rice paddy. Already, it's estimated a million hectares have been contaminated. The first line of defense are mangroves. Adapted to brackish water, they form a natural barrier against sea erosion. Mangroves actually attenuate wave energy. They reduce wave energy and therefore protect the dike from erosion. A 2005 study in Thailand concluded that an intact mangrove forest can reduce wave energy by up to 90%. 
In 2007, a new system of mangrove management was introduced in Vietnam, with conservation and replanting key features. This is the coastal village of Alto B, in Soc Trang province, within the Mekong Delta. With the backing of foreign aid, the local authority is involving villagers in the group management of their protective mangrove. Around 150 hectares is managed for multiple use, for aquaculture and for sustainable harvesting. Since we started the co-management, we're very happy because our daily income has increased. We can benefit now from about 50 to 60,000 dongs per day. A recent UN study valued the services provided by one square kilometer of mangrove forest at 900,000 US dollars per year. The village enjoys many benefits from the mangrove forest. The forest acts as a barrier to the storms and saves our rice from the seawater. This benefits all of our agricultural production. But we also get the benefit from the mangrove forest in terms of the sea life we harvest, like the crabs and the clams that live in the mangrove forest.